Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode 14 of New York and Beyond with me, Christina Kremitas. And in this episode, we are talking about the liberating effects of neatening up and organizing your space. So stay tuned, we're covering everything here. Welcome back, guys. Thank you so much for being here for another episode of New York and Beyond. You guys are going to love this episode. We have Laura Bostrom on with us today, and she's going to be sharing with us tips and tricks for organizing and really the mental liberation that we get from organizing our homes. Laura is a professional organizer. She works in the New York tri-state area and her female founded company Everyday Order has helped hundreds of people maximize their space and organizing their lives so they can focus on what really matters, quality time with loved ones. Laura is amazing and she's also a super cool woman that I'm really excited to have you hear from. So without further ado, let's talk to Laura. (laughs) Hi, Laura. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. (laughs) We are so excited to have you on today. And I know that you are going to bring us knowledge that I, at least I know personally, I desperately need. And I think the audience is going to feel the same. So I did a brief intro. They, They know who you are, but if you can just let us know a little bit about what you're up to, your mission... Yeah. So I have two little kids and right before my son was born, I started an organizing business because I just felt that I just saw how busy everybody was and especially being a mom and working and being pulled a million different directions. Um, it's really easy for things to get out of hand. So when my son was little, I decided to start everyday order. And that was about four years ago. And really our mission is just to help busy women and families get organized. So their days are more efficient and filled with more ease and joy, because I think that's kind of what everyone is after. They just want to feel at home in their home. So that's what me and my team are really trying to do for our clients. Thank you for that. And I thought that was so funny that you started with, I have two kids. They definitely can define your life. I feel like I can't even imagine keeping organized when you do have children in the house. So anyone that's doing that, I give an immense amount of credit, (laughs) but a lot of our listeners are in New York city and city apartments. They're very small. So could you share with our audience, what would be your biggest piece of advice for us in our city apartments, our small spaces? How can we get organized? So the biggest, biggest thing you can't organize clutter. So right off the bat, just really this probably wasn't what everyone wants to hear, but keep only the things that you love and that make you feel great and happy. And then you can organize those things. Um, like I said, you can't organize clutter and the way to do it in smaller spaces is to use vertical space, um, and kind of hidden waste in space, like maybe behind the doors or build shelves up high. Um, and just to use the vertical space. But I think the thing it's really hard, um, is just having too much for the space. You either have the space or you have the stuff. It's impossible to have, to have both. My husband and I have actually, we've been married 14 years and we moved seven times and moving is always a really good time to purge and just really figure out. That's actually what made me want to start getting into organizing because we've moved. I realized the things that I love and like what I was moving from place to place and what I was using and what I wasn't using. So basically just keep what you love and use the vertical space. I feel like that's such good advice for us because I know that I definitely accumulate too much. I have a hard time throwing things away sometimes and you have like a security and knowing like, okay, I have a hundred white t-shirts, so I will never not (laughs) have one if I want to wear one. But I feel like it's not the best mentality to have like in New York city apartments, we have to just get more comfortable with getting rid of the excess for sure. And it is liberating when you do. Mm Mm-hmm. I feel even if it's behind closed doors or cabinets, even it's subconsciously, you know, things are there. And when you go through it, you'll feel like lighter. It'll like, in like, it'll just feel more free and light. And, um, I think that's, it's actual, and that's like the trickle effect to keep organizing. You start with one space, you see how good it feels and then just keep, you kind of get motivated to keep going. Yeah. And I was going to ask you, you work with so many clients on organization projects and I'm thinking you must see people really benefit from these new spruced up and organized spaces. Like what are the benefits aside from, you know, aside from just like how it looks, like, do you feel like your clients experience like 
other benefits from needing from neatening up and tidying up like is are they like totally liberated yeah i think yes and but some other great things is just like mental clarity and then just being more efficient day to day saving money on not buying duplicates and letting food go expired because you can't even find it you can't see it back there um and like obviously like saving time by not running around like and searching for lost I don't know, keys and papers and looking for your favorite leggings. Um, so there are so many benefits. If I listed all of them, it's like even one of those benefits, I would do it. <laughs> but there's so many benefits from decluttering and organizing. So, 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 so true. So something that I do all the time, which doesn't really help me get through the process, but I'll like wake up and be like, okay, I have to revamp this entire apartment. Like the whole apartment has to go. Like we either need to move or I'm throwing away every single thing I own. And it's a giant project and it always feels so overwhelming. So do you have any advice for us? Like, let's say someone's like, I really want to start fresh. Like, where should we start? A really good place to start, especially if you're doing it yourself, is just a drawer, like the junk drawer in your kitchen. And because it's simple and it's contained and like you can only use that space in the drawer, otherwise it's not going to close. So I would start with the drawer and then just take everything out, see what you have, toss any trash, um, group like things together. Like in a junk drawer, it's usually the same things like pins, pencils, I don't know, coins, notepads electronic cords, whatever's in there. And then, um, put it back grouped like with like, so you know where to find them next time. Um, but that's a great place to start is a drawer, even like a sock drawer, like any drawer. (laughs) So true. Drawers tend to just like accumulate like stuff that we don't even want. We just like, for some reason, if we're not going to throw it out, it just goes straight into the drawer and we're like, I'll deal with that later. Yeah. Like that's where the cords go in the drawer. And then it at some point it'll stop closing, but, and also you can fit a lot in there. Like, that's why I would say, take it out because you'll view that same, like when you open the drawer, like, oh yeah, that's okay. But when you take it all out and see it spread across the countertop, it's really amazing what can be, can fit in there. And then it allows you to kind of like view that like out of its normal context and helps you make decisions better on like what to keep and what to donate or trash or whatever. So, so true. I have right now a little drawer for like cables and wires and adapters and chargers. And it's the biggest stress. If I need something, I'm like, I have to go deal with that drawer. You're like untangling. (laughs) It's so bad. Why do we do this to ourselves? (laughs) Everyone has the cords, everybody. They like, and then they bring them they're sometimes like 20 years old. I'm like, Oh no, that's like the cord. The cable guy left me like 10 houses ago, but I have to have, (laughs) I don't know what's what it is with the cords, but, um, but yeah, that's funny. If you don't know what they are, you can like, I did this for myself once I put a note to my, my future self. I was like, if I haven't opened this bag in six months, I'm throwing out these cords. Um, and the next time I moved, I found that bag and I threw it out. So (laughs) It's that's actually such a good point too. mentally note or like put a label on it. If I don't figure out what this is for (laughs) this year, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm never going to need it clearly. Can you help us with kitchens? Because kitchens are something that I feel like, especially in New York. And if you're in a city, your kitchen is the kitchens are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Like that's the one thing they're like, Oh, we let's sacrifice square footage in the kitchen is like the number one place they do it. Like you're lucky if you even have a stove nowadays in the city. Mm -hmm. So can you help? I think cabinet space is hard to come by in the kitchen. So how can we keep our kitchens functional, but neat? So you want to work backwards, meaning start with the things that you're using daily and make spots for those things, make that really accessible. So like the lower cabinets should be your like everyday plates and cups. Um, and so make that accessible and then, then work back to like the weekly stuff, things you use weekly, find spots for those. And if you're starting to fill up, maybe the monthly stuff gets stored somewhere else, or maybe you have to reevaluate. Do I really need this? Is it worth the space that it's taking up? Um, so I would just start with the daily and kind of work your way back. Cause every kitchen's different. Everybody has different things in their kitchen based on whether they like to entertain or bake or I don't know, whatever they want to do, but work your way backwards. And then sometimes it might get to a point where yeah, you do have to make some tough decisions, but I really like having my space over my stuff. Um, I don't want to be irritated, putting things away. I want it to be easy. 
So it's worth it to me to like maybe get rid of like an avocado slicer. One of these things people might get you as a gift, but you could just use a knife or a fork for that. Try and think of things that are also that you could use instead of that tool or how many measuring cups do you really need? Some people have a lot, <laughs> probably only need one or two, but so yeah, just work your way backwards and just be honest with yourself. So true. Such good advice. And I'm looking behind you and seeing your kitchen. That's your kitchen behind you, right? Yeah. You're, yeah. <laughs> you're definitely, you definitely practice what you preach. Your kitchen looks like it's straight out of a magazine. It's so pretty. Oh, thank you. <laughs> where, where, where are you located again? So we just moved to Sparta, New Jersey. So it's like Northern New Jersey. So cool. Oh, okay. My husband, my husband's family is from Bergen County. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah you definitely like get a little, yeah. little more West. Nice. Mm -hmm. You get some nice space up there though. It's beautiful. Yes. We, yeah, we just moved. It's, it's great. More space. It's great for the kids to have a little more space. So nice. So nice. Talk to us about the bathroom because the bathroom cabinet under the sink is a black hole. Like why don't they give us shelves in that thing? First of all. And second of all, what can we do? Is there a way that we can make it more conducive? Do you have hacks for the bathroom? Yes. Okay. That's kind of like a drawer. So you got to take everything out and group like with like cotton balls, backup shampoo and conditioner or extra products. Um, so group them together. The problem area is the pipe. You have really have to figure out what you're going to keep in there and then measure around the pipe to make sure you can, um, fit like a bin there in between the two sides of the pipes. But anyways, stacking drawers work really well for that space. And you can find those at the container store, target, Amazon, and then you can stack them to fit a lot more to use the vertical space and try and get it. So it's just in between the pipe, um, And then sometimes for taller products, I might use like a lazy Susan under there, which is like a turntable, but something that's stacky, even if it's shoe boxes, like clear shoe boxes that stack your extra products, but that's the key is stacking. (laughs) So true. When I moved, when I moved recently, we moved into this apartment in, okay, it wasn't recent. We moved in 2019 and I am still saying recently because I feel like I haven't experienced real life in this apartment yet. But, mm-hmm. but with the under the sink, I, we got in and I was like, this under the sink situation is never going to be a mess for me ever again. And uh, spoiler alert, it's become a mess, obviously, but I use <laughs> self-standing shelves, like support themselves. They don't need to be bolted in, but yeah, yeah. it didn't work well. So I'm going to try what you're saying now I'm going to do. Could you also share links with us? I'll post them in the description. Any links for items that you know would work because I'm always looking for something good and whether the thing is flimsy or it wasn't right for the space, it's such a trial and error. And I feel like you have the expertise to be like, no, this is definitely what you need. So I'm going to try to fix that for myself for sure. Yes, I love it. And I feel like these little things, as you fix them, they really do improve your day. I feel like it really does. You wake up, it's easier to get ready in the morning. It's less stressful. And it just, it, when something looks nice, you want to keep it up because you want to keep it looking nice. So, but when it's like, doesn't look great at all. And you're just shoving stuff in there. It's just really easy to keep shoving. Right. So that's another benefit too. Once it looks nice, you'll want to keep it up. So another downfall, I feel like I can't be the only one. I, I really hope I'm not the only one, but clothes and shoes are truly a downfall. And Storage space is not that easy in the city. I mean, you don't always have extra storage outside of your unit, your apartment, and the apartment has like what maybe like most people I would say have like a few closets in their entire apartment. So, Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people say put your out of season stuff somewhere else, but what if we don't have somewhere else to put them? Tons of clothes, tons of shoes with no place to put the out of season stuff. Like what? could you say for that? So back to the, like, um, using those kind of hidden spaces. So under the bed hooks, you can use hooks for bags and hats. Um, even like a command hook, it can look really cute. If you have some cute hats, um, you can kind of like either put them over your dresser or along a wall, um, using the space behind the door, they make like over the door shoe racks. There's even like alpha system that you could put 
like different mittens and hats and gloves and then change it out seasonally. If you don't have any of those things, then maybe the next time I would like buy furniture that has built-in storage, like un- under the bed storage or like a bench at the end of your bed with storage in it. And then also it might be t- time to just be like the space or the stuff. Like, is this really worth the stress that it's causing me? And be honest, a, a lot of times people only wear about 20% of their wardrobe. So just hone in on that 20%, like what you're really wearing and buy those types of clothes going forward. And then try and like weed out that 80%. Yeah, and just be honest with yourself, the space, do want the space or the stuff. Those are really good points. And the space saving furniture, I feel is such an important thing that I tend to overlook only because I'll buy furniture based off of how pretty it looks. And the stuff that has extra storage isn't always the trendiest, but I feel like they're getting, you know, they're making them look nicer nowadays. So it's just something. There's I some think- better ones. Yeah. Yours on the side or even to like raise the bed and use those under the bed boxes. Those are really good. If you can use the under the bed for out of season, that's what I usually try and do. If clients have a small, small space. Do you find Mm -hmm. that your clients have the tendency to not want to get rid of clothing that they haven't worn in a while? Because I feel like it's just the second you get rid of it, you're going to be like, where was that shirt that I hadn't worn in two years, but now I really want like, how do you get people past that? Or is it just me? (laughs) So, well, especially now it's hard because the rule of like, if you haven't worn it in a year, you should donate. It doesn't really apply as much because we haven't been wearing normal clothes. Um, (laughs) but if you like, you want to keep things again, I keep going back to the same point, but do you absolutely love it? Do you feel amazing in it? And then when I'm donating clothes, I try and think of the person wearing it and giving it a second life, like more positive, like someone's going to be wearing this and love it more than I do, as opposed to thinking it's going to be like shredded up and sold for like rags. I don't know which they do. That's like a rumor. I don't know what they really do with clothes, but, um, I think that helps me get rid of stuff. Or I'll give it to a friend who's like a similar size. And, it, and I tell her like, just either keep it or donate what you don't use. And I don't, it doesn't matter either way, but it just makes me feel better. I'm getting it out of my house. Once you get to like a comfortable level, then try and like, when you buy something new, try and like donate something else. So you're keeping the same consistent amount of stuff in your space. Yeah, that's actually such a good point too. And I, I tell myself this all the time and then I don't always do it, but I'll be like, okay, I'm ordering something that I have 10 other, like, let's, let's say it's like black jeans. I'm like, okay, I really want these new pair of black jeans. So when I get them, I'm going to get rid of an old pair of black jeans. Do I do it? No, but I think it's good advice. I think it really is. And I think I'm going to get, I'm going to try to be a lot more serious about like getting rid of the old one of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have the space, that's great. But if you're like really pinched on space, um, yeah, try and do the one in one out because what happens if it's too, like if the hangers are too close together or it's like a real pain to like shove something back in a drawer, you don't put it away because it's too much work. Um, so just try and make it easier for yourself. So it just makes your whole getting ready easier and everything easier. Totally, totally agree. That reminded me a little bit of sometimes donating for me takes a lot of the guilt out of getting rid of a lot of stuff that I haven't even really worn at all um, when it comes to clothes and shoes. But you know what was also interesting? And I'm wondering if you ever share this point of view with your clients as well. I saw this, I've read this, I think it was in Marie Kondo's book of like for organizing. I don't even remember what the name of it was now. Tidying up or something like that. Uh yeah. Life changing yes. magic of tidying up. <laughs> yeah. Something. So have you, um, are you a fan of the advice that she shares there? I mean, I know that she goes into talking about if something it really isn't donatable or something I wouldn't really think to donate or if donating is not even that easy all the time in Manhattan. I've tried several times and I'll call the locations and like, oh, we're not taking this or that, or we're only taking like women's clothes, like women's business attire and blazers. And I'm like, but I have like shorts, you know, like sometimes it's not easy. So I'll like trek my things out to like I think I track my stuff out to like Goodwill or something like that. And they pretty much take anything. But if we're trying to get around the guilt of getting rid of stuff, I know Marie Kondo in her book, she talks about like it served its purpose for you and you can release it. And even if you're going to get rid of it, like you don't have to feel guilty about it. And I, that helped too, to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you share the same advice? 
I do like that advice from her. And I remember a part from her book as well saying like, maybe the joy was just in buying that shirt. Maybe that's what that shirt's purpose was for you. Not that you're going to wear it for like three years, but that it was, it made you feel good in the moment and happy. And so I, I thought that was really interesting because I had never thought of it from that point of view. It's very simple. Does this bring you joy? It's very true. It's kind of along the same lines. Like, do you love it? And does it bring you joy? That's what you should be keeping. Um, Cause there's no hard and fast rules. Everybody is so different. Their spaces are different. They have, they like different things, but I think that's a flat out thing across the board is like, do you love it? Or does it bring you joy? That's a really good, just question to ask yourself when you're getting rid of stuff. Um, so I, I do like that part of her book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. And I was actually surprised at, at how helpful it was too, because there is so much guilt in getting rid of things. And I think a huge problem too, that we're just victims of almost is like, fast fashion and how easy it is to get a hold of like the the trends change very quickly and fast fashion makes it super affordable to just buy anything that you 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 only like it for a week sometimes you know but you still own it now and I feel like I noticed just the other day I'm like you now can have like 20 cheap versions of the same thing instead of like Maybe before people had like one quality dress, like one, not Mm -hmm. one dress in your whole wardrobe, but you had one piece that did the job of those 20 and it was Mm -hmm. a quality piece that you really cared for and it would last you. And I feel like we don't, we don't have much of that anymore Mm -hmm. and it creates such excess. Mm -hmm. It's so true. Yeah. Uh, You've heard probably like quality over um, quantity, or there's another little quote, I guess you could call it that I like, which just less, but better. So it's less stuff, but like better quality of the stuff. I mean, sometimes, you know, you're going out, you're going on a vacation, you want something fun, but in general, if you're buying something that's going to last, it should be less of that, but better quality. And like, it's, that's kind of back to the thing where you're only wearing 20% of your clothes, 80, like 80% of the time. So kind of buy the better quality of that, like 20%. That's your kind of like everyday quote unquote uniform or style that'll help going forward and just keeping a consistent level of clothing or items in your home. It's so true. I really do. I feel like it's so true. And I feel like when I was even younger, it was even worse because you have, you do have that FOMO feeling or like, Oh my God, everyone has this particular bag or this particular pair of pants. Like you need it. Like you can't live without it. But now I almost feel like, especially with the pandemic, I feel like that might've helped a little bit too, but it's like, what I like is what I like. And I can, you know, have a few of those nice items. I don't need to, to be ordering every single like little thing I see. I feel like that's like a good reminder though. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been living in my merch, like this sweatshirt that I have on right now is literally my, um, my own merch that I had made up and I've been giving it away. Yeah. I I give it away every single week. Yeah. Thank you. I'll send you, I'll send you a set, but I live in this now and I'm kind of wondering, I'm like, this is my uniform. Like if I'm going out on showings, like as a real estate agent, I'm literally putting this on and I'm going out the door with like leather pants. Like that's my uniform in the winter. That's it. Um, and I'm like, I'm fine with that. Like, I feel like I'm okay with that. You know? And I'm like, it's so simple. I like it. I was noticing that. Yeah. I just ordered some new sweatshirts too. So yeah. Yeah, right? yeah. I've been, um, it's, it's definitely, it feels nice to just be simpler, honestly. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. It's le- like you said, if you could get over, like not get over the FOMO, but if you're just like comfortable in what you own and what, where you're like headed and what your like purpose is, that sounds like a big <laughs> statement, but like your purpose in life and just like, I'm comfortable with this. This makes me happy. And doing that, I think, and kind of adapt that into your home as well. I think, yeah, you're off to a really good start. It's that's so true. I feel like I love that you mentioned that because with, I, I, I blame a lot of things on social media. I love social media and I also hate it because I feel like we've become like jack of all trades. Like everyone, you you know, you see an Instagram account of someone that's like 
cooking and now you need whatever product they had to cook with, but you're not really going to use it because you don't cook, but someone on Instagram that you like cooks and now you have to be a chef too. And then there's like the fashion influencer who you like their style and you buy the things that they wear and you're like, oh, I should post like outfits on Instagram. Like everyone now needs to be like a style influencer. And then there's like every little, everything we see nowadays, it's like you want to become great at it because you see so many other role models that are great at different things. But I felt like, and that's, that puts a lot of pressure and it it causes a lot of accumulation of things that you really aren't even going to use. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really true. I, I like that you brought that up because it's very easy, especially if you like know, like, and trust that person when you see them wearing something or doing something, you don't even think twice. You just hit that like Amazon button. You're like, Oh, it's coming to me. (laughs) Yeah. And yeah, you do end up with, with a lot of extra stuff. And then you're kind of like, Hmm, do I bake? Or was that like something I thought I was going to do? Yeah. Um, That happens a lot with clients, like with baking or like a hobby, maybe they were going to, I don't know. I don't know play a certain sport or tennis. And then they realize that's like something I might like aspire to do, but I have to be honest with myself. I'm not going to be a tennis star. So I'm going to donate it. Yep. We're Um, not doing that. Like we're not, Yeah, I I feel like that's been such a growth. It's not, we're not, I feel like that's been such a huge growth experience for me. Like even in just in this past year with social media, like you don't have to like start doing everything you see on Instagram, but it's, it's honestly so hard because Instagram also not, not only Instagram, but every platform, everything looks, you're, you're only seeing the final product. You don't Mm -hmm. see like the mess that it makes in the kitchen. Like I'll be like, Oh, this is a great idea. (laughs) My husband yeah. will be like, what made you think that this was a good idea? Like you're covered in flour. Like this is, a <laughs> it's just, it's so true though. It's so true. Yeah. Don't compare your, your middle to somebody else's like end or something. Cause Instagram is everybody's end. Usually like the best and the prettiest and the perfect, but yeah. Yeah. yeah I feel like I've started to really practice like is this something I'm truly interested in or did I just really like this piece of content? Because if I'm not really doing it, I'm, I can't order the product. I'm just, it's not worth it, you know? So, but that takes, I feel like it takes a minute to like recognize that that's happening, you know? Yes. And to start like that, you're at such a good point. I love it, Christina. You're, you're already <laughs> thinking like, where do I really need this? How long is it going to last? And then like, where could it go in my apartment? Like, do I even have room for, is it like, do I even have room for this? Um, Cause that's also like the key of like buying less and bringing less into your home. It's so true. Cause I'm trying to feel like, where does the root of it start? Because that's really like the beginning of the solution. And for me, it's definitely things I see on the internet. I'm like, oh my God, that table, that long banquet table. And the way they have it set is so nice. So I'll be like, okay, we need 25 small plates, 25 large plates, 25 (laughs) sets of ornate utensils, special like fabric napkins. And John will literally, my husband will literally be like, Christina, we don't even have 25 friends. What? are you doing? (laughs) Yeah. My husband, we, yeah. So I just said, we just moved and I'm like, Oh, but we need this when we have like parties outside. He's like, when is, when is that happening? Like this doesn't happen. Everyone always thinks like when everyone's coming to my house, this is what I'm going to use. But in reality that like doesn't happen that often. (laughs) It doesn't happen. We bought so much nice stuff when we moved into this apartment. Since then we had people over once we had a large group of people over one time since November of 2019. And that Mm -hmm. is because of the pandemic, but still it would have been twice if it wasn't because of the, if the pandemic wasn't the case. And with all the nice stuff that we bought, I swear to you, we bought it. It was a 4th of July party and we went out and bought, um, red, white, and blue plastic stuff, honestly, for the party. And I'm like, we got so much nice stuff that was like glassware and you're not using it really not. I know. Yeah. (laughs) And then you move it from house to house. So yeah. Yes. But that's, yeah, the key is just like right when you're going to buy something or just kind of really like gut check, like, do I need this? Is this an impulse decision? Like how long is it going to last and where am I going to keep it? Yeah. And am I really, really going to use it? It's true. I feel like it takes that level of thought, like before it's in the apartment, like it needs to Mm -hmm. never enter. Do you tend to find that people's homes are a physical manifestation of their personal lives or their mental state? I think yes and no. So I think papers 
can be really hard to, to be focused when there's a lot of papers. So I think it's very easy to be distracted. You're less creative. Um, so, but, so that is key when you're like trying to have an organized like workspace to have like a clear desk and minimize the amount of papers or just have a simple system for those. But I'll, I've also noticed that people that have a lot of stuff, uh, are very um, giving people and just spend their time trying to help other people. And they really don't take the time to focus on themselves and stop for a minute and like do like the self-care of organizing for their homes. Um, so, but over, but yes, it can get really overwhelming when you have more stuff. Um, I think it really depends on the person, but when it gets to a point, there's, when there's too much clutter, you can't focus not creative. You're jumping from task to task because everything is calling your name that you see. You're like, Oh, I got to do the dishes. I got to like, Oh, this, this belongs in this room. And you just like go around and you don't get anything done. Um, so yes and no, it's like a hard question to ask, but I've noticed there's different like parallels within, um, like clutter and, and people's like mental state or their well being. Yeah. And it's so interesting because my husband and I are so different. He is, and this is going to go back to what you just described, which is this concept of organizing your space and keeping your home neat, being a form of self-care. I had never, I honestly never equated the two. And I feel like that's like the mindset shift. I'm always looking for like, what is it that's going to click in my head? That's going to make me really take this seriously because I'm the kind of person where I am jumping from task to task. I'm running from place to place. I, if me being early is being like right on time, like I am right on time to the second, like I'm not going to be there. I'm it's terrible to say, but like, I'm not going to be there early. Like my appointments are so, so back to back. And as a result, I won't get to the organizing because it's just, there's no, I feel like there's not a lot of time for it. And my husband is the opposite where like he will intentionally take the time to meet up as he goes and he allocates time for himself. He's like, I need relaxation time. So every single night at a certain time, I will be relaxing, like whatever his form of relaxation is for the day, like whether it's watching a show, whether it's like laying in bed and like going on his phone, it's like his time and he takes it so seriously. And the two I'm realizing are like hand in hand, like he's extremely neat. And my mm -hmm. workspace is just like, my workspace looks like a tornado hit it. And then his side of the table is like impeccable. Yeah. And I'm always like, what's the mindset shift? But I really, I think it's exactly what you said. I feel like it's the, the aspect of like, you deserve this element of self-care. Like it's good for you. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah, it's a tip and it's, it's really hard. I mean, sometimes I'm really great at it. Other times I'm also like running around cause there's just so much to do. But when you take the time and set, set aside the time, I like to do it at night. So when I, like, I make like a to-do list at night and I don't obviously don't do it every day, but when I do take like five minutes to make a to-do list for the next day and kind of like tidy up and get my thoughts straight, um, my day goes so much better the following day. Um, and it is self-care because you're taking care of yourself. There's even like a study. I don't know who did it, but if you take those few, like five minutes to make a to-do list for the next day, you save 45 to 90 minutes of time that would have been wasted. Like, Oh, what should I do next? Um, or just like aim picking up your phone and scrolling Instagram when you kind of like map it out, like even loosely, it's fine. You'll save a lot of time the next day. Um, but they That's do go hand in hand, even like your mind. And then also like your space when like, even though we don't all want to do it, but just cleaning up at the end of the day, or like, you know, kind of clearing off the surfaces, it does help you relax because like I said, when things are out on the counters, your eyes subconsciously are aware of all the stuff. Um, but when it's away, you do feel lighter and just clear headed. So, so true. I really love what you mentioned about time blocking. I know it's not like directly related to like home organization, but it's mind organization. And it is so true. I completely agree. I've been doing it now for like about a year, I would say, but before, before doing that, I don't know how I was getting anything done. 
But now like every single night I go into my calendar app on my phone and I create a meeting for myself, like a literal meeting that's going to give me a reminder for every single thing that I need to do the next day. And it makes it so easy. And it also is very satisfying to be like, oh, my alarm rang and I'm on to the next task. And like, I'm on time. I'm on schedule today. And it's very, it's so satisfying. I like that you do it in, um, like outlook. Yeah. I use, yep. mm -hmm, Yep. I use like my calendar, my calendar app, which is like linked to, I have like, it's bad, but I have like, I do have like three calendars, like three different calendars. I have an outlook one. I have one that I use with my assistant and that we use mostly for social media stuff. And, um, then a shared calendar that I use for like real estate agents and our real estate appointments. So it's like kind of insane, but yes, absolutely. Like, and then all of my stuff that I have to address on my side, like all of my administrative tasks, all of my personal tasks, like all, I have a time block for dinner. Like I really do. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to live any other way now since I started doing that. I like that. I like that you set little timers. I might have to try that out. The alarm is good because otherwise I'll just completely ignore that that I made a schedule that day. Honestly, Mm -hmm. it's, it's satisfying because when it rings, I'm like, okay, like I was done with the previous task. I'm ready to move on. You feel like a little win, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Sometimes I feel that storage solutions, like there are so many storage solutions out there. And sometimes I'm wondering, like, are they just allowing me to save things that I don't really need just because now they're like more organized? So yes. Well, I feel like there's a few parts. So when, when we work, we'll kind of, like I said before, pull everything out and sort it and group it like with like, and then only when you know, like what you're keeping in that space then you can buy the products for it. I feel like a lot of times people are like, okay, I'm going to go get organized. I'm going to either like, I don't know, buy something on Amazon, go to Target in person, go to the container store. And then they come home with a bunch of products first and then try and make those work. And, but they're just not quite right. So yeah, figure out what you're keeping first. And then based on the space that it's going in, that's when you want to buy the products for it. Um, so like if you were under the sink, you would buy the, like some drawers, put the things in the drawers, you can label them. And I think if you do that to answer your question, you're not going to be keeping things you don't need. I mean, you do have, there is some maintenance to it. Like, you know, your skincare is going to change, or maybe you like start working from home or I don't know, a new routine. You're going to have to like change, adapt your systems. But I think when you, if you buy the products after you know what you're going to keep, it's going to be able to, you'll maintain it a lot easier and it'll be easy to see what you have. So you can kind of like donate as you go um, and not end up keeping a bunch of stuff you don't need. So true. And back to the thing, back to the idea we were talking about before, which is course correct before it gets into your apartment. Like Mm -hmm. even just the other day, not the other day. I was just thinking about this the other day, but I, I had recently switched my hair color. Like I was blonde my entire life. I noticed. Yes. Thank you. I was, <laughs> yeah, pretty. I was, thanks. I was blonde my entire life. And now I'm this, like, I don't even know what this is called. It's like a dark reddish purple. And yeah. I still, but I still have all of my blonde hair care products. Like I just, for some reason, I, I'm like, I, I don't plan on going blonde, back to blonde, but I'm like, why can't I release these blonde hair care products for my life? Like they're still like in my shower and in my drawer. And then, um, too, like when you talk about like not buying new products, like I'll buy, like, let's say I'm buying a product for my hair and I don't know which like color or formula is best. Like I'll buy, I'll buy both of them right then and be like, okay, I'll like figure I'll, I'll try them both. But that's like, not, mm-hmm. no, we need to be buying like the one trying it. If it's not working then okay, like get rid of it and buy the second one. Cause now I have like, I'll have like two bottles of a similar product in my closet. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's terrible. And let, yes, buy one or have a spot in your home where your returns go and then stay on top of like taking those back to either the store or like UPS and just getting them out. Um, so that they just like kind of become like a big pile. Um, but yeah, just being kind of like aware of what's coming in your home and trying to kind of like one in one out, get what isn't yours out or donate it. 
So that's another thing I forgot to say about like the donations is if you do organize your closet or any space, try and get them out ASAP because your project, it'll be finished instead of just like those donations sitting there for like a month, reminding you that you still haven't finished the project. So try and like find a place to donate them and then get them out as soon as you can. Yeah. Cause that's the worst too. Like you do the whole project and you have like giant bags sitting in the house for like a month after. And you're like, <laughs> what was the point? What was the point of that? I know. Can you talk to us about office, like home office space? Because I feel like we, I don't know if this is forever, true for everyone, but from the beginning of this pandemic, it's been over a year now. And I think work from home at least part-time is here to stay. But we keep being told, like we kept being told from the beginning, like two weeks, two weeks more, two weeks more, two weeks more, one month more. Like, so I don't know if any of us, real, I don't know if many of us invested in like real work from home space. Like it's very, it feels very makeshift still. Like we're in a corner or we're in what we're using the kitchen table and we haven't bought a real desk. Like, so for those of us who are in that situation, do you have any tips for us for how we can make our makeshift home office space a little bit more productive and conducive? Yes, Christina, that's so true. We still, I see so many dining room offices lately. <laughs> They're like, that's like the new office. Um, that's where I'm at right now, just because I feel like it has good light and it's free, of, has a lot of space to move around. Um, so thankfully, most people just need like a computer, a phone, and maybe like, you know, a printer and some supplies, but which is easily like you're able to move it easily. Um, but number one is just keeping the space clear. So keeping the horizontal spaces clear. So you're not wanting to like stack more piles or things aren't getting lost. Um, so that also allows you to like, kind of think more clearly. And then I would have kind of a home base somewhere where you keep all the office kind of stuff, even if it's not, I mean, on at your dining room table, or if you don't have a desk specifically, but have a place where all your pins are, you know, the printer paper journals. And then I would kind of return in that, what like at the beginning of the day, grab what you need or whatever, and then just put it back at the end of the day. So that way your dining room table doesn't become like a permanent office and you can, you can eat on it. It's kind of like picking up at the end of the day and kind of like refreshing your space. So true. Because I feel like the entire apartment has become an office now. Like you do a little bit of something in one location and then you're like in the kitchen doing something else. So yeah, I completely, agree, completely agree with you on that. I feel like that's an amazing piece of advice. Cause I think what happens is then you'll have like pins in like five different spots. So just have one. So everyone knows where it is, where it goes back. And, um, and then, and then, yeah, kind of like clean up at the end of each day. But I mean, yeah, it is, some people don't have the room for like a real, a desk and maybe it might not make sense. So I think that's the best solution. And then also just having like a little system to like even a tray to set papers that maybe you're actively working on or, um, like in our house, we have like magazine files, which allow paper to kind of stand upright and you can just like drop them in. So I have one where like my mail goes and then I get to it when I get to it, but at least it's not just sitting on the counter. And then like, once I go through the mail, I have like a, an action bin where like, those are the current projects I'm working on. So then those papers are all kind of like in a spot, not just laying out. Cause a lot of times people want to see the stuff out to remind them to do something. But if you just kind of have like a place where those reminders live, that way they're not going to get lost and they're not just taking up all this like visual space. I think that's really helpful. Yes. I'm guilty of doing that. I'm guilty of leaving something out until I've addressed it. And it's like so bad. And then my husband will get like so fed up. He'll like come around with like a bag and just like put all my stuff into a bag. And like, he's like all your stuff, like all of your garbage is like there, like deal with it. Yeah. It's like, it's really bad. It's so funny. Cause I'll be like, Oh, like if I get like an invitation, like just the other day, I got an invitation for something that I was invited to that I wasn't, that I'm not able to go to. So I'm like, let me keep this invitation out on the desk until I buy the gift and send the gift. And then, then I know that that's taken care of and it'll keep reminding me, but, um, but no, mm -hmm. like it's not that I could have a phone reminder for that. Yeah. Phone reminder or David Allen wrote this book called, I forget what it's called right now, but if he says, if you can do something in two minutes or less, just do it now. Like a lot of times, if I need to order something on Amazon, like before I would write it on a list to 
to like do later. Now I just like open my phone and I'll order it right then and there. So it's like done or like, you know, you could write a check in two minutes or less. So many things you can do, send a text in two minutes or less. Um, I think it's easy for us to like put that on a list, but then it's just taking more time. So So that kind of helps get those little things out of the way. Yeah. So true. So true. And it it just weighs you down mentally. I feel like you have like Mm -hmm. all these little tasks. There's so many. Yeah. Totally. Mm -hmm. Totally. So as an entrepreneur, because you are an organization queen, but you do have your own and you do have your own company everyday order. So how have you found success growing the business? And what would be your advice to entrepreneurs looking to grow a business of their own? Yeah, I think for me, it was like definitely the community of women organizing as a profession is growing very rapidly, especially since the pandemic. But over the last like five years, it's really picked up speed. And there are so many women in this profession now and everyone just all over the U S and the world and just like making connections with them. Um, and everyone's really nice and helpful and it's a really cool community. And what's happened now is that some times that we'll get referrals based like they're in, I don't know, a different state. Like I just got one for West Virginia. So I sent her to somebody else and it's a really great community of just like collaborating and working together. So that was, that's probably the biggest thing. And I think Instagram is great. You can learn so much. You can see what other people in your profession are doing and kind of use them as role models. And you have access to all these people so much easier than before. I mean, you can shoot them a DM. I mean, they might not be able to meet you for coffee, but you can really establish relationships over Instagram. Um, and that's been, that's been really cool. Um, so those two things, just like the community and building relationships within the community using Instagram, um, have been, have been really key. Mm -hmm. So many good points. Thank you so much. Yeah. And that question, I know you brought up like how women have been very supportive in the industry too. I had originally phrased this question as, you know, the fact that you're a female entrepreneur, but I feel like I don't even really like talking about it that way anymore only because like being a female entrepreneur isn't like, I, I just kind of changed that question up because I'm like, it's not a handicap to be a female entrepreneur. Like, you know, like we face similar issues, you know, like men and women face similar issues. It's, it's never easy being an entrepreneur, even if you are a man. So I kind of just like changed up that question, but I hope you don't mind. I don't know. I feel like there's so much, I feel like there's a lot of communication around like female owned, female entrepreneur, but Mm -hmm. almost as if it's like, you know, you you're succeeding despite being a female, like, you know, (laughs) I mean, it's a really powerful time to be an entrepreneur. I mean, it's growing so rapidly. I think the pandemic forced people to just like, really like, do I love my job? Or maybe they lost their job. And so they kind of picked up a passion that they had been thinking about, but never like actually, you know, went all in with it. Um, And it's, it's a pretty exciting time to be, I mean, as you know, to like, I don't know, be in business and just kind of see what happens. But, um, so yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting times for sure. What does the process typically look like? Can you give our audience an idea of what the process typically looks like when you begin an organization project with a client? So yeah, we meet, um, like we'll chat on the phone. I'll kind of learn like what's bothering them, what areas they could use help with. And, then I'll either do an in-person consultation, but a lot of times people will just send me pictures because that allows me to see the space. And then I can also use those to kind of figure out what products we might need to maximize their space because I like to bring at least something with me to help us like transform the space or get it started. Just because I feel like you kind of lose momentum if you have to like leave shop and come back. So I try and like bring as much as I can to help help get us going in the right direction. And then, so it's kind of like what I was saying before, we'll, we'll take everything out, sort it, um, group like with like, when I say we, I have like a, another organizer that comes with me. So there's at least two of us, so we can do a little faster. And then the only part we really need the client is to come in and make decisions about what they're going to keep, um, toss and donate. And we kind of walk them through that and then kind of ask them questions. How often are you using this? And then, so we can set up the space based on their lifestyle and their habit. It's not a cookie cutter approach. We want to like make the space based on them. 
and then we'll add, figure out where things go and add the products and then add the label. So yeah, so at the end, the, the labels really help because if you're the only one that knows the system, then it's not really a system because you other people don't know where things go or where to put them back. So the labels help keep everyone in check. I mean, spouses, kids, nannies, um, housekeepers. So I think that's a really key part is just the labels at the end, but that's kind of like the same, the same thing, whether you do a drawer or a master closet, it's that same process of taking out purging and like strategizing the space and adding any products. Awesome. I'm sure that we're going to have audience members reaching out to you because you're, and your main service area is, are you, you're, you're in like the Northeast region, right? Like New York, New Jersey. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do. Um, yeah. Like the tri-state area. Yeah. So, that's what I meant. Um, Sorry, I don't know why I said Northeast region. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have a job like eight years ago and we, and it was like the Northeast region. And I'm like, like I guess I like never forgot about that. So th- th- the tri-state area. <laughs> the Northeast region. Um, so yeah, we work on, yeah, the city, a lot in North Jersey where I live. Yeah. We'll, we'll travel all over. So yeah, that's kind of fun. It keeps it interesting. Like no day is ever the same. Totally true. Do you, are you offering virtual organization solutions at this time? Yeah, we do have virtual organizing. We are doing in person. And then I also have, um, like online courses on my website, which is cool. If people want to kind of do that more like DIY approach, um, kind of like go into more depth of what I was talking today and like show examples and videos and things like that. Oh, that's actually so cool. I was going to ask you if you could share with us where the audience can get more info. I know that we're, we're pushing time. So I want to be cognizant. I could talk to you forever, but yeah, if you want to let our audience know where to find those resources, what they can find on your website, what your Instagram handle is and anything else you wanted to direct them to. Yeah. The two best places to find me are Instagram. And so that's everyday underscore order. Um, And through that link, you can find like my favorite products. You can find my website, my courses. And then also my website is www dot everydayorder.com. I don't know why I said www. Everybody knows that now. So everydayorder.com and you can find tons of info. I do have a blog. I don't do it as much as I would like, but you can find all the services we offer. We do a lot of like moving and unpacking as well. Kind of tells a little bit about more about the team and how we work. And then that's where you can like set up a call if you wanted to chat. Awesome. Thank you so much, Laura. This was amazing. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Christina. This was, yeah, this was a lot of fun. I had fun talking with you and I feel like I learned some stuff as well. I'm going to go do that thing with my, uh, (laughs) send some alerts on my calendar. (laughs) I'm like, I feel like we got kind of deep in this episode about how can we really get better at this stuff? Cause it's definitely a daily challenge for me. Thank you so much again, Laura. We'll definitely be in touch. I feel like our audience is going to be like messaging you asking for help. Yes. I would love to hear from you guys. Thank you, Christina, for having me. And yeah, shoot me a DM over on Instagram. Yes. Thank you guys. How incredible was Laura? She gave us so many useful tools that I'm going to be implementing in my own home. Feel free to always send me your comments. You can get in touch with me on Instagram. My handle is Christina.Kremitas. You can send me an email. My email address is Christina.Kremitas at element.com. All of my contact info is always in the description of these episodes. Don't forget that this series is available on both YouTube as well as the podcast. So if you like listening on the go, there is a podcast where every single episode lives. And for those of you who are currently listening on the podcast, there are video versions of every single episode on YouTube. New York and Beyond strives to be our daily dose of inspiration and knowledge. We feel feature experts in various industries to bring us valuable information and we walk away from each of these episodes knowing something that we didn't know before. This show has become such a cool way to network virtually and it's put us in touch with so many incredible people. The audience itself is becoming such a cool community of growth-minded individuals. It's been so cool getting to know you so make sure that you're following me on all of my other platforms so that we can get to know each other even better. I do run giveaways every single week on my Instagram so just keep that in mind the things that I've been currently giving away are my merch which you can see here I'm currently wearing the sweatshirt and there are matching pants with the same embroidery so yeah you can head over to my Instagram and check that out those giveaways happen every single Thursday thank you guys so much for being here and stay tuned for next week